Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be finding slopes of inverse functions. To help us understand this topic, let's review something we know about inverse functions. We're going to use the parent function y equals x squared to help us understand what we're going to be doing today. So let's all consider f of x equals x squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to define this parabola only for x values greater than or equal to 0. <laughs> so even though I've drawn the whole parabola, we're only going to consider this portion of the graph over here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and consider some points that are on f of x equals x squared. For example, we can consider a 1, 1, a 2, 4, and let's look at 3, 9. And I know this isn't drawn to scale, but for what we need to do, this will be, this will be fine. Okay, so all three of these points belong to x squared. Okay, so let's go over here and consider the inverse function for f of x. Okay, and there's a couple of different ways that you can represent uh, the inverse function. You can use the standard notation with the negative 1 here. That means inverse. Uh, or it might be that we just call the inverse to f uh, a g function. We would have to know that, though. We would have to be told that g would represent the inverse to f. Otherwise, if we're just presented with this notation, we know through the notation that this means the inverse to f of x. Okay. If we think about the inverse function, uh, what we're doing is we're switching the x's and y's. We're reversing the ordered pairs. And we're taking all those reversals and we're plotting them over here. So if 1, 1 belongs here, 1, 1 belongs here. 2, 4 belongs here, then 4, 2 belongs on the inverse, and 9, 3 would belong over here on the inverse. So just a quick sketch. Okay, and of course 0, 0 is an important point too, and 0, 0, 0 would belong on the inverse as well. Okay, so as you might remember, the inverse function okay, would be the square root function, the positive branch. And that makes sense because if we have an x squared function, the inverse would be to square root, so we have the square root function like this. So naming these points here, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. Okay, right here in this space, analytically, I'm going to show that um, the square root function is the inverse to f of x. So this might remind you of something you've done in the past. Uh, so if you just want to watch what I'm doing here, that'd be fine. Okay, what you did in the past to find an inverse function was you switched the x and y in the equation. So if I have y equals x squared, the inverse would be x equals y squared, and you'd solve for the new y. Well, to solve for the new y, I'd have to bring in the square root on both sides of the equation. So when I do that, I'm going to have positive negative square root of x. And if you think for just a minute over here on this graph, I only graph the positive root, because if I graph the negative root, it would be located down here in quadrant 4, which would result in us not having a function, because we'd fail the vertical line test. So that's precisely why back over here, I, I just defined um, y equals x squared um, to be um, for values x greater than or equal to 0, because I wanted the inverse to be a function. So just a real quick review of, of things that we've done in the past to find inverse functions given an equation. Switch the x and y, solve for the new y. Okay, so that's analytically working with the equation. Numerically, working with the points just requires that we reverse the ordered pair, switch the x and y, and produce the new graph. So you worked in both formats, actually. You worked with the analytical uh, piece, and you worked with the numerical piece. All right, so we have a function, and we have its inverse. So the topic for this lesson for calculus is, let's look at the slopes of inverse functions. Okay, so let's return to what we know about finding derivatives to find slopes. So for f of x equals x squared, the derivative is 2x. 
And let's say I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2 to y equals x squared. So that would require us evaluating the derivative at 2. So 2 times 2 would give us 4. <clears throat> so the slope of the graph of y equals x squared at 2 is 4. So I'm trying to draw in a tangent line here. <clears throat> okay, so for what we want to look at today is we want to consider the relationship of this value, 4, okay, to what the slope is on the inverse at the point x equals 4. So 2, 4 here, 4, 2 here. All right, so let's just kind of visually look at what we think the slope of the graph would be on the inverse at its inverse point. Okay, so there is a relationship that exists between this numerical value and this numerical value right here. And that relationship is the reciprocal. So if the slope here is 4 at x equals 2, when y is 4, then the slope at 4 uh, over here is going to be 1 fourth. Okay, so we can verify that by actually going through and finding the derivative of the inverse and evaluating the inverse at x equals 4. So we'll do that now. Okay, this is the notation that represents the inverse function, but if I want to find the derivative, okay, I would want to bring in the derivative, the, the prime, if you will. An alternate way that you might see that as well is something like this. The inverse derivative at x. Okay, well to find the derivative, Okay, let's come back up here. If we rewrote it as x raised to the 1 half power, we just use the power rule, and we end up with 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Or another way to think about it is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. Okay, like mentioned earlier, the slope of the graph on the function at x equals 2 was 4, so we expect the slope of the inverse function at 4 to be 1 fourth. Okay, so let's evaluate the derivative of the inverse at 4 not at 2, that was the x over here, okay? The um, x over here is the 4, which is the y-coordinate from here. Okay, so everywhere I see x, I'm going to replace it with 4. And I end up with 1 fourth. It's not a coincidence, it does happen, uh, and, and that's the relationship that exists. Okay, let's look at one more comparison, and we'll pick on the point um, x equals 3 on the regular function here. All right, so let's go and evaluate the derivative at 3. When I plug in 3 to the derivative, I'm going to get a slope of 6. Okay, and so if we wanted to get a visual of that, the slope of the graph is more steep right here. It's 6. So what's the slope of the inverse graph at x equals 9? Because that's the inverse point. Well, if the slope on the regular graph is 6, we expect the slope of the inverse to be 1 sixth. So let's evaluate the inverse derivative at x equals 9. Okay, and using the derivative, 1 over 2 times the square root of 9, which we know to be 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So yes, okay, that relationship exists um, between inverse points, and that relationship is a reciprocal slope. Something you may be thinking of is, well, wh why do I have to know that that relationship exists, that the slopes at inverse points are reciprocals, when I can just actually go through and find the inverse, find its derivative, and plug in the x value, uh, at which I want the slope. And, I mean, that's a valid question. You know, wh why, why should I have to know that if I can just do this? Well, here's the problem. If you have a function such as f of x equals this cube function right here, okay, for you to have to find the, the inverse, you're going to have to go through the analytical work of switching x's and y's. So let's see what happens when we do that. X, uh, y equals x cubed plus x squared minus 6x plus 3. If I wanted to find the derivative on the inverse of this graph, then if you're going to try and find the inverse equation, you're going to run into a little problem. Okay, so if I were to switch the x's and y's, I'm going to get x equals y cubed plus y squared minus uh, 
6y plus 3. Well, unlike up here in this example where it was real easy to switch, oh, here we are, okay, where it was real, real easy to switch the x and y and solve for the new y, right here, there's no way I can solve for y and get y by itself to differentiate it so that I can plug in um, an x value. So sometimes, you know, um, it's, just, it's just not going to happen that you're going to be able to uh, solve and find the inverse like we did. So you need to have some kind of other knowledge about um, relationships that exist at inverse points. Okay, so um, at this point, um, hopefully you understand that there is value in, in knowing this relationship that the slopes are reciprocals of one another at inverse points. So I guess uh, the next thing is let's just look at the definition uh, of the derivative of an inverse function and then we'll look at an example. Before we look at the definition of the derivative of an inverse function, and actually it's a theorem, uh, you might want to put yourself a little note out here to the side, something about um, impossible to find the inverse. All right, now let's look at the derivative of an inverse function, at least the theorem that we're going to be using. And just for your reference, here's a theorem number that's in our textbook. It's in Chapter 5. It's Theorem 5.9, and it's called the derivative of an inverse function. Okay, it looks something like this. If f has an inverse function called g, if f has an inverse function called g. And that should be called g. We can call it anything we want, but in this particular theorem, they're calling the inverse function g. We could have called it f to the negative 1. Okay? But if this is true and f has that inverse function called g, then and here's our little formula. The derivative, the derivative g prime on g, okay, is equal to the reciprocal, so that would be 1 over, okay, it'd be the reciprocal of the derivative evaluated, the derivative of f evaluated at, we don't want to put x, okay, we want to put the y coordinate or in other notation g of x. So this is the y coordinate um, on uh, the regular function f, but it's actually the x-coordinate on the g function. Okay. And as a connection, think back to the problems that we looked at up here. You know, the slope of the inverse at 4 was 1 fourth, the slope on the inverse at 9 was 1 6, but these two inputs right here, okay, were the y values, okay, were the y values that came out of the f function. Okay, so now that we have our formula, it's time to look at, okay, how are they going to ask us to answer questions ab about this formula? So we'll do that in the next video.